Good morning and welcome to worship. Let's begin our service. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silence now as we reflect on our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only Son, Jesus, to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will now read the words of our introit. Today's words coming from select verses from Psalm 89. As we read, we read responsively. Your words are found in bold on the screen. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who exult in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28, beginning with verse 5. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah, the prophet, in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our epistle reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 7, beginning with verse 1. The Apostle Paul writes, Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? Thus a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives, but if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, and if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 34th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts, all of our minds be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, it's been a while now since we've been in lockdown mode from COVID-19. And yes, things are, are getting better. Restrictions are being lifted. But things still aren't quite normal just yet. You know, throughout this lockdown, my family, we've tried to keep things as normal as possible. One thing that, that we've done each Friday, we've tried to make it a tradition to eat out each Friday. Now, obviously, we couldn't go out to a restaurant. But each Friday, I would 
go to a local restaurant and bring some food home for supper. Sometimes I'd go to a restaurant here in town. Sometimes we'd go out to Grand Island. Sometimes I'd stick to the tried and true of fast food. Other times I'd order carry out uh, from a nice sit down restaurant. Now, there's one particular sit-down restaurant in Grand Island that my family, we really enjoy. Now, we don't eat there a lot because it gets quite pricey to eat there, but we'll eat there once in a while. During this lockdown, this particular restaurant introduced some family meal bundles. And in the early days of the lockdown, these bundles, they had a lot of options and they were pretty affordable. In fact, I could order two family meal bundles and spend less than 50 bucks. Understand this, it costs almost $50 to feed my family of seven at McDonald's. So this was a no brainer. On more than one occasion, I grabbed some food from this restaurant and brought it home on a Friday. The first time we did it, we were impressed. I had ordered two different family meal bundles. One was with a huge tray of pulled pork, barbecued pork. The other was with chicken strips. Each meal came with a large salad to share, plus bread and four sides. So a lot of food when you're ordering two of these meals. It was a great experience. And so it was with great enthusiasm that I placed my second order of carryout from this same restaurant a few weeks later. And this time we wanted to try something out a, a bit different. So this time I ordered two of the cheeseburger family meal bundles. Each bundle came with four cheeseburgers plus the salad and the bread and the sides. I had eaten the cheeseburgers from this restaurant in the restaurant in the past, loved their cheeseburgers. So I was envisioning eight large, juicy, fresh grilled burgers. But when I got home and we opened up the containers, we did not have eight large, juicy, freshly grilled burgers. Instead, we had eight tiny, flimsy cheeseburgers. These are the same ones that they include in the children's meals. I was disappointed, but I thought, you know, it's still going to be good. I mean, it's from my favorite restaurant. It's going to be good. We got plates ready. We sat down at the table. We prayed. We each took a bite of our cheeseburger. And the patties, all eight of them, were raw. Not rare, but raw. We had to put them all in the microwave in order to eat them. In the end, we had a bunch of small, processed, over-salted microwave cheeseburgers with some fries that had gotten way too cold by the time we were ready to eat. You know, our first carryout experience with this restaurant had been great. The second one, not so much. It was not what we had expected. You know, I think we can say the same thing about the year 2020, right? It's not been what we expected. I remember going back to the end of December, a lot of people being excited for a new year. Now, I cannot remember with certainty what was so terrible about the year 2019, but I do recall a number of people who were ready to say goodbye to what they had seen as a terrible year and welcome in a fresh start. Now, 2020, when it started off, at least for me, it was a great year. I mean, the Chiefs finally won the Super Bowl. It was a great start to the year for me. But soon after that, everything began to fall apart in our world. From wildfires in Australia to a global pandemic to stay at home orders to a collapsing economy to murder hornets to murder to protests 
to riots, to anger, to confusion, to chaos, to change. The year 2020 has not been what we expected. You know, when we hear God's word, when we read scripture, sometimes we hear things that we are not expecting. That is certainly the case with today's readings. In our gospel reading, Jesus says, Do not think that I've come to the earth to bring peace. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. And then Jesus talks about families being split apart, family members turning against one another, all because of Jesus. You know, when we become Christians, I don't think any of us hope to see our families crumble and fall apart. And yet today, Jesus says, whoever loves family more than me is not worthy of me. Those are difficult words. Those are unexpected words that we hear today from Jesus. And yet, as surprising as Jesus' words are today, I'm even more surprised by what Paul has to say in our reading from Romans. In today's reading from the book of Romans, Paul tells you to end your marriage. And yes, you heard me right. In today's reading, from the book of Romans, Paul tells you to end your marriage. Now, before you begin to frantically page through your Bibles, let me explain it. In today's reading, Paul says that when someone dies, their marriage is over. The surviving spouse is no longer held to the marriage commitment. They are now free to belong to someone else. They are now free to marry someone else. They are now free to love someone else. They are now free to have children with someone else. Paul says you were married to sin. Sin was your spouse. You loved your spouse. You were passionate for your spouse. You proudly bore children for your spouse. You proudly bore fruit for sin, fruit for death. But now you have died. In Christ, you have died. And having died, your marriage to sin is now over. You are now free to marry someone else. You are now free to belong to Jesus to love Jesus, to be passionate for Jesus, and to bear fruit for God. In today's reading from the book of Romans, Paul tells you to end your marriage to sin and to be married to God. Now, with that explanation, this reading probably does not seem all that confusing or unexpected, right? I mean, what's the message? Turn away from your sin, turn back to God. We hear that that message a lot in scripture. But do you know what is surprising? What is unexpected in today's reading? You have spent your life married to sin. And in that marriage, you have done some terrible things, some dirty things, some shameful things. And now here you are available again. And the perfect almighty creator of the universe wants to choose you as his bride. You know, when I look at myself and my sin, I'm left asking, who would possibly want me? And God, of all people, says, I do. And what's even more unexpected about this is what God does in order to make me his own. He becomes like me. He becomes a man. And he suffers for me. As a man, he goes to the cross. And he dies. For me. And it gets even better. 
Because three days after Jesus dies on the cross, he does something even more unusual, even more unexpected. Three days later, he rises from the dead. And now in your baptism, you are united with Christ in his death. And having died, your marriage to sin is over. And having been united with Christ in his death, you are also united with Christ in his resurrection. that You might live forever as his bride. You see, the thing that's most unexpected about today's reading is actually what we've come to expect from God every day. Every day, we take God's love for granted. Every day we take the cross for granted. We fail to recognize just how unusual and unexpected God's love for us truly is. God loves you so much that he was willing to give up everything he had to make you his own. So going back to our gospel reading, it shouldn't surprise us when we hear Jesus say, whoever loves family more than me is not worthy of me. Because a love that is willing to give up all that one has for the sake of another demands the same kind of love in return. Having been united to Christ, you are now called to give up all that you have in devotion to Jesus. Now, that's not going to be easy. It means saying goodbye to your first husband, and you loved your first husband. It means saying goodbye to many things in this world that you've become attached to. But let's face it, sin is a terrible husband. Saying goodbye to sin means saying goodbye to years of abuse it means saying goodbye to shame and guilt. It means saying goodbye to death. Today is reading from the book of Romans. We are called to do something that at first sounds rather unexpected. You're called to end your marriage. You are called to end your marriage to sin. To end your love for sin. To end your passion for sin and stop bearing his children. Instead, be united to Christ. Love Christ. Be united to Christ and bear the fruit of eternal life. Amen. I now invite you to join me as together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I now invite you to turn with me to the Lord in prayer. We pray. Most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray for you to rule and govern your church and all pastors and ministers, that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word, defended against all adversity, and protected from all adversaries, that our faith may be strengthened and our love increased. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray for those suffering want, trouble, 
sickness, anguish, and grief in this world. Hear us as we pray for those names that we carry on our hearts. Give them courage to stand firm in their afflictions and patience until the day of your deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, preserve us from disease and every evil. Give to us favorable weather and cause the fruits of the earth to prosper so that we may enjoy them in due season and offer you praise and thanksgiving for all your goodness to us. Help us to serve where our skills and abilities may be of good use. Bless the arts and music that we may please you and be encouraged by all that is good, right, true, and beautiful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, give to all husbands and wives grace to live together in love and faithfulness. Bless the homes and families of your people, that they may be places where your name is honored and love is nurtured. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, we come to you with thankful hearts, thanking you for the gift of life. We lift up to you all mothers expecting new life in this world, praying for Nicole, Rebecca, and the children in their wombs. Lord, we thank you for the life given to Diana as she celebrates her birthday this week. We thank you for the new life that we have in you through the waters of baptism. We lift up to you Robin and Ian who both celebrate their baptismal birthdays this week. And we thank you, Lord, for the gift of marriage as we lift up to you, Kurt and Sue, who celebrate their anniversary. We also thank you for all who serve to protect and preserve our lives. We lift up to you, Mark, Miles, Jonathan, Zach, Max, Caleb, Cody, Devin, and all who serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus our Lord, through whom we are bold to call you Father, and in whose name we pray, trusting in your mercy and confident that you will give answer to our prayers. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we receive the blessing of our God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face, shine on you, and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. This uh, brings an end to today's worship service. Uh, we've had a number of announcements uh, that have been in our bulletins, a couple things that I'll share with you, and then one new announcement that I shared for the first time last week. Uh, first of all, uh, we are collecting UPC codes from Best Choice labels. Best Choice is a, a brand that you can find here at the Aurora Mall, here in Aurora, at the grocery store. We're collecting those for the preschool. And want to encourage you to bring those in. Uh, we've already had a large number collected, enough for Deanna, our preschool director, to turn some in already. And she says, thank you for that. want to encourage you to continue to bring those in. Second of all, we are going to have a cookbook for our 10th anniversary here at Cross of Christ in October. And this week, July 1st, just a couple days away, uh, is the deadline. It's the deadline for submitting recipes online, also the deadline for ordering cookbooks. If you need a form, if you need to do that, 
please send me a quick email and we can get you what you need and uh, get all that taken care of. Finally, I announced this last Sunday, I have received a call to serve as the pastor at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Haxton, Colorado. This doesn't mean that I'm going anywhere right now. It's simply the deliberation process. I have two calls to consider. One is my current call here at Cross of Christ in Aurora. The other now at Emmanuel in Haxton. During this deliberation process, as I seek God's will to be done, as I seek God's will in knowing where he wants me now to serve, I ask for your prayers. Pray for me, pray for my family. Know that I am also praying for you. Pray for Cross of Christ. Pray for Emmanuel and Haxton. Ultimately, pray for God's will to be done. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.